Hi, my name is Alexey Borisenko, and in today's video, I will discuss observability for LLM applications with Nir Gazit, the co-founder and CEO at Traceloop. Hi, Nir. Hey, great to be here. Yeah, thanks for joining. Uh, let's start with general overview of observability for LLMs. Uh, which issues this helps to solve? Uh, what are the primary personas that can use open LLM metry? So I think it's everyone in the organization who's either consuming or defining, you know, observability platforms. So it can range from the SREs and DevOps, but also we see a lot of uh, engineers uh, quite often use use our observability solution just because they need to know what's happening in their system. Uh, wow, cool. Uh, you have a new feature on semantic conversation. What LLM attributes can it track? Uh, so we so we, we track uh, both traces and metrics. Actually, maybe this is like a good time to show uh, my screen. Mm -hmm. Um, sure. if you look at, you know, a span from OpenAI, then you can basically see, you know, the prompt, the completion that was sent, we also tra track, uh, you know, which model was sent, which model was actually used, some prompt data, completion, prices, and, and you know, uh, some more details like duration. It's basically given out of the box just because you're using the Open Telemetry Tracing API. And then on top of that, we also send out those details as metrics. So you can view them on aggregate. You can see your token usage on aggregate, splice and, slice and dice them uh, by model, uh, look at latencies and uh, costs as well. Uh, and which uh, feature from this dashboard is uh, used, for example, for, um, I don't know, privacy engineers or for uh, LLM developers, for example? Um, so I would say it really depends. One of the things we've seen people are using this for is, I haven't mentioned, but this is all based on open telemetry. So you can enrich it pretty easily also with our SDK, with open telemetry SDK, but also, you know, just by calling the open telemetry API directly. And you can potentially uh, add attributes that uh, specify the user. We also support that. And then you can see those metrics sliced and diced by uh, your users. And then you can see, for example, if there's a user who's abusing you know, your system, sending out more data, more uh, uh, calls to your system than others. And then you know, it imposes higher costs on your OpenAI bill at the end of the month. This is just one example. Yeah, and then you can block them, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can do exactly. Uh, with which security concerns uh, did you face while developing the telemetry platform? Uh, I think the most uh, prominent one is the data that we send. So the data, you know, the prompts, the prompts that we send is highly sensitive. Basically, if you have like a real application, the data that you send to OpenAI and, and the generations you're getting back are really sensitive. They're private information from your users. So sometimes you just want to mask them out. You want to hide some PII data. And these are the things that we support uh, within the SDK. And another layer is figuring out what your users are actually doing with your API. You know, is your, are your users abusing Let's say you build a chatbot. You want to make sure that your users are not abusing uh, your chatbot API. So then you want to use this information, the, pro the raw prompts and completion, and define a different you know, monitors to make sure that uh, everything is, is working as expected. And this is, I don't know if this is something you want to uh, go over to today as well, but it's also something we support uh, through the platform. Um, yeah, nice. And uh, I saw a list of uh, models that you support. Uh, which are um, coming models or uh, foundational uh, Gen AI organizations that you can onboard? Uh, everything. I think it might be easier to say which ones we don't support. Uh, so, like we support, you know, OpenAI, Anthropic, Cohere, uh, Bedrock, uh, Vertex AI. 
אולם המיסטראו, I probably forgot a few, but if you, everyone can go to our uh, uh, GitHub, uh, maybe you can do it now. If you go to our GitHub, you can basically see uh, everything that we support. And, and basically, these are the LM providers that we support. And these are the vector databases that we support. And these are the frameworks that we support. Yeah, thanks for sharing this. Now, what about if... Um organization deploy um, their own or open source models on premise um, how they can utilize open metry so the key thing here is that we uh, connect to SDK so you have to use some well-known SDK even if you're using like a locally deployed model uh, so that we can automatically trace your calls to the LLM model. Otherwise, you'll have to, we also have this, but you'll have to like manually use the API and like log the prompts and completion, which can be a bit cumbersome. But I would say I've seen people use, for example, you know, uh, deploy Llama 3 by Fe from, from Meta, and then uh, they use the Olama, uh, you know, Olama uh, deployment option, like the Olama open source uh, for deploying it, which also have an SDK. So if you use the Olama SDK, then we also instrument. Yeah, yeah. Um, you probably have heard about Grok API that also yeah. like deploy in cloud uh, open source models. Uh, they're not in list, uh, but they can connect also as well, uh, as I understand. Yeah. Yeah, well, Grok is one of the things we don't support yet, but hopefully by this time, by the time this is out, we'll already be supporting Grok because this is in development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, they have have some speed, uh, token speed, and yeah, I personally enjoy to use it. Yeah. Uh, and which foundational models do you prefer to use for your daily task? It's a good question. Uh, it really, really depends on uh, on your specific use cases. Of course, when we began, you know, working on Open Elementary and Trace Loop, everyone everyone was using OpenAI and Azure. Uh, I think. It, it it I really feel it, it it's a trend. Like it it really. It, it's really you, you really see the trends in the industry. So when Google released, you know, Gemini, all of a sudden you've seen a surge, you know, of users using Gemini to I don't know to explore and in production, just because this is what everyone was talking about. And then Anthropic came with like Cloud Three, and then everyone all of a sudden started using Cloud Three. And then Cohere has like their Command R. So again, we're seeing like a lot of people trying to use Command R. So I feel it's a trend. Definitely, OpenAI is still the winner, but uh, it's it's highly trendy. The, the usage we we're seeing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if we're talking about uh, integration with vector database, uh, could you please show uh, which uh, metrics we can track there, like interaction with database? Definitely. Uh, let's see if I have it. Have something running here uh, out of the box. Basically, for vector databases, what I can show you in a dashboard, for example, is that for Pinecone, we track the scores. Uh, the score is a nice, it's a nice, useful metric that Pinecone and I think also other vector databases are returning. So when you call them, you get back a set of documents that you can then pass to your favorite LLM provider as context. And together with these documents, you usually get back scores. So each document has like a score attached to it, which is kind of... Uh, a proxy to you know how close is that document to the query you pass to the vector database. It gives you a sense of you know how related is the context with the query that you pass to it. So we can keep track of these scores, and this can give you a good sense when your model is about to hallucinate. Because if you've gotten back documents that have really abnormally low scores, for example, probably uh, there's nothing in the context that answers the question. And then when a model tries to answer the, the question that was given to it, it will hallucinate. Yeah. Um, what about uh, retrieval augmented generation? A lot of company now started to using it. And uh, yeah, this solution about uh, tracking uh, vector database can definitely help them. Mm -hmm. uh, with which problem usually company faced uh, on this uh, phase? So I would say mostly like hallucinations in the answers. So first figuring out whether the answer 
is faithful to the uh, context, whether it's, uh, it's like answering questions within the, con within the context it was given. And secondly, is actually making sure that the answer answers the question. So I, we've seen, you know, models answering questions which are in context, but completely unrelated to what the user has asked. And we've seen answers that are completely out of context. So we should check both of them. For, uh, for checking the context, you can use the, the, the scores you've gotten back from the vector database. And you can also use, for example, on the platform, we have a metric called soft faithfulness, which is a, a, an adaptation we've built for production for like high scale volumes uh, of uh, Raga's uh, faithfulness metric. And you can also uh, similarly use metrics for uh, making sure the answers are answering uh, the question. Yeah. Now, what do you see um, in current market state? Um, companies utilize uh, just to one uh, foundational models API, or they started to using AI frameworks. I think we see everything. Still, I would say most of the larger companies are just calling the APIs directly, like the foundation model API. But then we also see, you know, a lot of users using LangChain, a lot of users using Llama Index and Haystack. Uh, I think there's definitely, I'm not sure if there is a winner between using a lang, using a lang, a lang chain or like framework or not using anything, just vanilla Python and TypeScript. Uh, we definitely see both of these use cases. Yeah. Yeah. Uh on your integration with uh, AI frameworks like um, Llama Index, LangChain, uh, on which metrics usually users can pay attention? So I would say first looking at the trace, so being able to actually seeing the 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 entire you know uh, call to let's see if I have something here available. You want to see just the entire track. Uh, here is a LangChain question. So you want to keep track of what happened within the system. You can view, you know, all the inputs and outputs for each part of the chain pretty easily. And then you also want to keep track on the other metrics that you usually keep track on, which are latency, uh, token count, prices, and others. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now we see that a lot of models uh, constantly increase uh, context window size. So. Mm -hmm. um, um, like Gemini, for example, 1 million token, they announced 2 million token support. Uh, what's uh, the strength can talk about for, for developers, for us? It's a good question. I think it's a bit too early to, to tell. You know, uh, Anthropic released their 100K token window, I think it was more than a year ago. So I would say it's not a, it's, it's not a new trend. And I, and I think so far, I haven't seen models excel with these like huge uh, token windows. Like I think it's still pretty hard for those models to to kind of, you know pay attention to the entire context window, given that it is that large. But on the other hand, I've also seen like encouraging results from from Gemini. So we'll we'll have to wait and see. But so I, I would say as of today, I would still prefer to rely on things like a RAG pipeline where you give the model specific context rather than passing everything to the to a huge context window and hoping for the best. Yeah. Um, so um, OpenLMetry is open source product. Um, right. How many active contributors uh, do you have, like um, internal versus external? So most of the contributors are, are external. Uh, Within the company, we're only the only two people, me and another developer, my co-founder, uh, who's working on contributing to open elementary. And we have another like about around 30 contributors, which are all external, ranging from you know just indie hackers all the way to folks from IBM and Google who contribute uh, to our code base. Yeah. Uh, what was the main reason to choose Apache to that all? license i am a strong believer in open source i wanna 
I want to have, you know, I want to build a repo. I want to build an open source project, which is truly open source. You know, not, not one of these, you know, business licenses where uh, you, you kind of wonder uh, what can I do with it? What's allowed and what's not allowed? I think the good thing about a, a true open source project, and it's a, there's a clear def- definition of what's a true open source project is that you know that you can practically trust and, and do whatever you want with it. And you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, uh, any licensing issues. And I think if you're a big company, uh, it becomes uh, really important for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. And um, uh, a few changes connected with uh, Terraform changes the license. So Redis uh, was a little bit yeah. painful for <laughs> for community. For, for uh, everyone. <laughs> uh, so uh, in in open source uh, models uh, we have like maybe one or two leaders is uh, Mistral uh, with their Mistral models uh, which trends in open source uh, in LLM open source models do you see now and do, what what, do you, what models you can hi- highlight there I think I would say the same thing it's it's harder to to track what people are using with open source models because they can deploy it everywhere. So potentially like we have an instrumentation for replicate and you can use replicate with, with Llama and you can use Llama on bedrock or on Azure. So it's, it's, it's kind of hard to keep track of how people are actually using, uh, uh, these open source models. Definitely. I would say a lot of people are using Llama and, and mixed trial. Uh, but most of them are still using it, even though they are on-prem, like they're open source models, they're using them on some SaaS solutions or they're using them on Azure or like Bedrock. They're not, I haven't seen a lot of people uh, deploying them themselves, but but people, but, but some people are. I would say larger companies, more than smaller ones. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh- if we're talking about the visual capabilities of uh, some models, for example, um, Anthropic, uh, you can recognize images, text on there, uh, as well uh, image generation for um, GPT models, uh, chat GPT models from OpenAI. Um, how we can utilize um, open LLM there, working with images with this content? So unfortunately, we don't support images yet. The main problem is that we rely on open telemetry and open telemetry uh, is, isn't built to send, like you want to trace, you know, images. So you have to send the, the image that was sent to the model somehow. And, and this is something that open telemetry, given that it was like a cloud observability protocol, isn't designed to send, you know, these huge amounts of data uh, through, you know, as, as, a, as a span attribute or as, as part of a trace. So we are still working with the open telemetry community to figuring out what's the right way to model it within within the open telemetry ecosystem but i'm hope i'm hoping that in the next you know month or two we'll have something interesting uh, in that area as well i think we've, we're starting to see more and more people using these api especially the vision apis uh, as part of their products yeah 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 thanks uh Around four months ago, uh, on the podcast, answering the question, what is the biggest thing that come, comes up in uh, next year? You mentioned it about Gemini models, but uh, a lot of has happening since that time. What are you expecting next? It's a good question. Uh, back then, I thought it was Gemini, but I think people are a bit disappointed by the performance of Gemini so far. Uh, so... I would say something and then, you know, in the next couple of months, it will become false. So maybe GPT-5, maybe more like multi multi-modality and like models that can do multiple things. And I heard like a lot of crazy, I, I read over the weekend, like about OpenAI restarting their robotics uh, department. So like using, you know, these LLMs to to command, you know, real, real life robots. I think it's... It's pretty exciting uh, development that we might see, but this is like maybe my personal interest, and I'm not sure if if you're building, you know, with LLMs, you care about uh, 
robotic LLMs. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have uh, three minutes left. Uh, what else do you want to share with, with our community? Like um, f features, uh, maybe, or what is your roadmap for this open source project? So first, we haven't talked about, but we the open source is built around, you know, it can be connected to our platform, but we have a lot of companies using our open source and then connecting it to other observability platforms. So for example, you can connect it to Datadog, you connect it to, to Grafana, or you connect it to New Relic, and you know, there's tons of, what happened here? There's like tons of other uh, integrations that we support. And this is something that I, I think like a lot of people can, can use. Basically, our open source is extending open telemetry to support you know, LLM applications, and, and it can easily be connected to any observability platforms. And, you know, our paid platform trace loop uh, as well. Um, and and for the role, Splunk in the list. Sorry. Yes, sorry, I see Splunk in the list, which is a part of Cisco now, <laughs> just yeah. for notes. <laughs> yeah, these are actually, these integrations were all built by, by these partners. So, you know, folks from Splunk came and collaborated with, collaborated with us to make sure that this integration works. So, each of these integrations were actually tested by, by that company to make sure that, that it's actually working well and, and, and performing well uh, with open telemetry. So yeah, so Splunk is, 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 was added, I think, a few, two or three months ago. Yeah. Uh, what's your expectation from the future contributors to the product? Um, it should uh, focus on some kind of integration or, um, I don't know, issues fix it? What's your so strategy there? I would say first is helping us keep up with the industry. So, you know, you have, we have always have like new models, new providers that we need to support and want to keep up with what's happening with the industry. And another thing is, I think you mentioned it already, is like supporting multimodality, supporting uh, vision models, supporting image generation models. I think these are definitely things we want to see uh, instrumented and supported by open LLM train. I would love uh, for folks who would love to, who'd want to contribute. I think these are really interesting uh, features to work on. Yeah, awesome. Yenior, thanks for joining us today. It was a pleasure for me to talk to you and thanks for sharing your thoughts. Sure, likewise, we're great meeting you. Yeah, thanks.